Okay, I think we're going we're gonna to have to begin the report out now. So for the first group, it looks like uh, this group is finished. So Lauren with the group on refugees. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to ask that we keep the report to one minute. So maybe one success that you talked about and then maybe one possible collaborative activity. Um, so we looked at this question of uh, refugee education and um, we have a wonderful success story coming out of uh, Turkey with the, the work that Turkcell has done. Um, so we talked a little bit about that and understood that a little bit more, which led us to a, a possible collaboration, um, which was, and, and a learning from two other examples, um, which was the opportunity to work with local network providers, and network operators, for the resources that the business community or that governments have created, whether it's Futures Hub out of Deloitte or um, job placement services that are in the process of being developed, but that the mobile network operators can be a distribution um, a distribution source for that so that we can actually get better uh, distribution and get the resources in the hands of um, refugees because mobile network operators obviously know um, where folks are once they actually have some connectivity. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, sounds like it was a great discussion. Now, the second group, so Janet. Great, thank you. We had a very good discussion. Um, we did bring out the importance of understanding and respecting cultural uh, situations, cultural barriers, the social cultural barriers. So different barriers that women uh, might be facing and the risk of replicating in the virtual environment what we already see happening in the physical environment. And the opportunity then is to uh, build right in from the beginning into the governance structures of how we're approaching our collaboration that women and women's groups and women and young girls that are represented from the beginning in the design of the solution. Because we know that there are multiple groups out there at the grassroots who have been dealing and working with these challenges for many years. So integrate right from the very beginning. So deliberately engage them in um, innovative ways and then build that into the governance structure. We also talked about education at primary school, introducing technology right at that very young age for young girls as the education enrollment goes up so we can see a generational shift. Quotas, setting quotas was very important. Um, using social media uh, as well to promote, we talked about role models as a solution because if you can see yourself in that women tech leader or in that young digital champion who's female in your community, that will make a difference and look at the whole system. So it's not just about engaging only the women, but engaging all groups collaboratively. So it says to us, broadening even the representation that we've got through equals or through internet for all, and how do we do that through the networks that we all have in this room and bring those voices to the table. Okay, thank you, Janet. So the infrastructure group, we've got Joachim, so um, as a reminder, one uh, interesting collaboration that was discussed and one possible activity that we could take forward. We weren't that structured in our discussion, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and I think we were all grappling with uh, trying to tackle the challenge, uh, which is a very big one. We focused predominantly on how to reach those that are currently uh, not connected, and particularly in rural communities in developing countries. I think the problem that we identified actually was the lack of a whole of a government view, if I can put it like that. Um, uh, the awareness, attention, and prioritization. Part of that is the governments themselves not placing enough emphasis uh, and giving this enough prioritization. And part of it, we, which we just touched upon, was that industry perhaps wasn't good enough at explaining the use cases. For example, improving agricultural productivity. And therefore, a lot of uh, governments are actually struggling. Why the hell would they invest so much in digital infrastructure uh, and put, place such a priority on it? Uh, in, compared to, say, health education, not understanding how the digital infrastructure relates to boosting health and education and other things that are of priority to them. So that, that's one, something we discussed quite a bit, actually. When we got to then, how do we deal with it, and uh, some of the things that we d uh, d addressed was, uh, you know, there, are, there is a lot of money out there, and, and for rural communities in developing countries, how do we mobilize uh, the development uh, banks, uh, other fundings from donors, uh, uh, government support, 
uh, what was also very well raised in the group was it's not enough to have the money, it's how you implement it. Many times governments are, even when there is money available, have put bureaucratic hurdles, regulatory um, uh, procedures that basically raise the cost or make it untenable to rule out the infrastructure. So uh, if I have to summarize it, uh, governments and private sector together with international institutions have to come better together, establish best practices on how to effect cost effectively roll it out in rural communities, combining uh, financing instruments for cases where there's clearly not a business uh, model that can sustain the investment. And in that, uh, governments then have to also apply best practices in terms of its regulatory procedures so as to not inflate the cost or prevent actually amb the ambitions that it set out for itself. And that includes, down to, uh, we discussed actually concrete examples of down to municipal level where national government has said this is very important for us, but actually at the municipal level, they wouldn't give the uh, approvals or it takes forever or it will become very costly. Thank you very much. I, I appreciated the, the mention of blended finance, how that came up in that session. So I think this is a uh, area that we're going to go with the project. So that's really interesting. Okay, and lastly, um, we had a, uh, a merger of groups uh, during the breakout. So the fifth group and the first group realized they had a lot in common and so decided to join forces. So we're just going to ask one of their leaders to uh, present on the, the outcome. So Yu Yun. Um, yes, uh, we are a group of very passionate believer of technology benefit, but at the same time, we are quite concerned about the side effect of technology. Uh, we talked about the importance of education, uh, starting from young children to empower them with the social skills in a digital space. At the same time, how we can bring them into civic engagement into a more meaningful way, not just like on the social media. We want them to be active civic responsibility, uh, active citizen. So um, there were a couple of concerns that blocks the, this uh, uh, advancement. Um, the one is uh, technological and digital gap between the previous generation, which is us, <laughs> and young generation. So we are not very well equipped to teach our children about this digital skill. This is a, one of the big issues. But at the same time, there's a concern and fears in the society. Uh, should we give the technology to the children or should we block them? Uh, should we regulate uh, from the, uh, uh, the minister concern about is there a way that we can regulate um, or give the policy? So, but at the same time, there's a lots of resistance from private sector, according to her. At the same time, it, um, a lot of people don't know the solution yet. So what we discussed, we are very busy in sharing the passion, <laughs> uh, but there are two things that we want to make as an action point. The one is a minister uh, suggested about the data protection. At the same time, the, um, the privacy issue to raise in the UN and also uh, how we can bring the uh, private sec uh, public sector to have the right policy. Uh, give an example of uh, uh, GDPR in the U uh, EU and US uh, uh, giving the authority, uh, the privacy to the individuals as constitutional level. And the second thing is about education initiative. Uh, we are running a DQ Every Child for empowering young children, eight to 12 years old, with the right digital skills and citizenship skills to all around the world. So we are trying to set a global standard for the digital citizenship and digital skills for that. So we are inviting all of you to our education initiative in, in every regard. Thank you. Thank you, Yu Yoon, and thank you to everybody for participating in the breakout discussions. It sounds like there was a lot of progress made. And just for one final remark before we close the session, I want to invite Antonio Garcia from the Inter-American Development Bank to talk a bit about some of the way ahead. Thank you so much. So, you know, very briefly, I would like to, uh, to address a little bit the work that we are doing together with the with World Economic Forum and Internet for All Initiative in a region that even though has not been uh, Specific, specifically mentioned during the event is, uh, you know, is, is lagging behind as well in terms of infrastructure and in terms of adoption and usage, which is Latin America. So with the World Economic Forum, we have been working also on reducing the poverty, but uh, a particular type of poverty, the digital poverty. And we have been working together in Argentina in two different areas. Uh, one, which is precisely bringing together uh, different stakeholders from the public and the private sector on how uh, to improve the connectivity in the northern part of the, of the country. 
uh, just to improve precisely issues like productivity in agriculture and so on. But another important thing is precisely the issue of digital literacy. And this is also another area th where the work that we have been doing uh, has been very instrumental for the discussions that we are having with the government. We are uh, now working uh, on different and additional countries like uh, uh, Peru and, and Paraguay, and we really hope uh, that you know, we, we achieve the same results as we are doing in, in Argentina. So I would like to say again thank you to Eric and all the team for, for the great work together. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Antonio, and uh, the forum is very much looking forward to expanding this collaboration and uh, working with you further. And with that, I'd like to wrap up the session. Thank you very much, everybody, for your participation. Uh, please note, if you want to continue the discussion, there will be a private meeting of the Internet for All Steering Committee plus friends tomorrow, and if anybody's not on the list and you want to come, let me know afterwards. And that's it. Thank you.